The final timeline split is getting closer every day. Here's what you need to know to end up on a higher timeline. Hi, I'm Saratoga Ocean, and I work together with an interdimensional, interuniversal, and extraterrestrial force known as Telstar, along with Archangel Michael. I've noticed that the conversation around timelines is beginning to change. It's getting a lot more complicated and confusing. This might be because no one really knows how this whole thing is going to play out. So let's take some time here to unconfuse ourselves and go back to the basics about the major timeline split that we are facing on this planet. Let's start with the main evolutionary timeline of natural evolution. That's the one that we want to be on. So what is that one all about and why is it necessary? In our universe, everything is evolving from a finite state of being back into its original state of oneness. Now this has been interpreted in many ways. One popular view is that the creator separated itself into millions and millions of different parts because it wanted to have all of these different experiences, including the bad stuff. Now, let me just suggest that this view does not make any sense. If this were true, then it would mean that the Creator is not as bright as we thought. It would mean that we, along with all other living things, are getting a bad deal because it would mean that we are the product of a seriously amateur and maybe even a very disturbed Creator. So let me show you how we can debunk this theory using one simple fact. This theory suggests that the Creator had a need to experience itself not only as the light, but also as the darkness. The claim is that the Creator wanted to experience itself as things like fear, anger, death, and destruction. But here is the blazingly obvious fact. Those negative experiences are not the experience of the Creator. They are what it feels like to have little or no experience of the Creator at all. So, if the Creator thought it could experience itself by not experiencing itself, well, then such a Creator would be kind of like pretty dumb. It would be like saying that love wanted to experience itself as not being love, which isn't even possible. If love is not experiencing love, then love is not experiencing itself at all. I think that this whole idea that God wants to have all of these weird and horrible experiences is a mischaracterization of what is going on here. So let's just talk about planet Earth as an example of an even bigger problem in the wider universe. Because the problem's not just here, it's throughout the universe as well. So here we have entropy, deterioration, we have death and decay. We have separation, violence, suffering and destruction. All of these things are a clear indication that something has gone very wrong. It's not an indication that this is a wonderful example of God's beautiful work. Like I said, the idea that the Creator gets some kind of perverse joy out of this kind of misery does not make any sense at all. I've even heard it said that the Creator did this out of loneliness or boredom. I mean, that's just really lame. Think about this. If God is all-knowing, then it doesn't have to try such a bizarre experiment to see what it would feel like to be miserable in every conceivable form. It would already know everything about that idea without even trying it, and would likely see no point in trying something that stupid. So I'm not buying this idea that God or Source wanted things this way. 
The reason that we have so much conflict on this planet in every conceivable form is because there was definitely a weird experiment tried somewhere in the cosmos. But we can't go blaming that on the Creator just because it makes us feel better. What we have in this universe is a manifesting illusion that everything is separate from everything else. It's why the entire universe as we know it is mathematically based. This separation is what causes all of the problems, like every single one of them. So, if we look at the simple timeline of natural evolution, it refers to an ongoing timeline of the universe evolving itself out of this situation and back to its original state of omnipresent oneness. It basically represents the act of the universe healing itself from the results of this really bad experiment. Now, oneness does not mean that everything turns into a big blob of light. What it means is that every single thing that exists, exists as a manifestation of omnipresent love. It's a completely different energy than separation. Now, this is not something that we can understand fully from our currently separated state, but it is something that we can intuit from our hearts. That's because our hearts are the gateway to that original truth. Now, I cannot define for you who or what initiated this bad experiment. It came from a dimension of reality that is just not accessible to our conscious mind's way of understanding things. And fortunately, we don't need to be able to answer that question in order to evolve out of this. What we need is to be true to ourselves in the purest of ways, learn to be fully present, and listen to the messages from our hearts. So you can think about the main timeline of natural evolution in the following way. It's a trajectory of ongoing evolution and ascension into greater and greater levels of manifestation that more closely match a full alignment with the amazing creation of nature in this universe as it was originally intended to be, which is a pure and perfect manifestation of love. That's how oneness will ultimately be restored. It means that everything that manifests is a pure and perfect expression of the oneness of omnipresent love. It's fully imbued with the energy of love, and it is love. Now, if you are a light worker or a star seed, you are probably already aware to some degree or another of this natural evolutionary timeline. You most likely came here to anchor the consciousness of that timeline on this planet so as to give others a chance to either come into resonance with it or to stay in resonance with it. And this is the purpose of our presence here. It's all about energy, resonance, vibration, and fields of consciousness. We are each here to do our own unique part in maintaining such things here on planet Earth. And this is why it's so important that we are clear about the nature of the two major timelines that are in the process of splitting. So we've talked about the first primary timeline that is a part of the larger universe's effort to evolve out of this manifesting illusion of separation that causes so much suffering. Now let's talk about the second one, which is the lower timeline that seeks only to make the problem of separation so much worse. And that is the lower AI timeline, which represents a total split from any experience of God or the Creator. It seeks to replace the real God or Creator with a fake artificial God instead. Once such a thing is achieved, then total separation at the deepest possible soul level will be achieved. Now, this artificial timeline has been introducing aspects of itself for many, many years. It may have actually gotten a foothold well over 10,000 years ago with the advent of agriculture and the domestication of animals. 
This could have been the early beginnings of what has now emerged as a full-blown AI takeover of this Earth. It started with small attempts to control nature and eventually led to total control of humans. At some point, the goal is to control all life on Earth, plants and animals included. So it's not like AI introduces itself all at once. It literally injects itself as a small part of the fabric of civilization, and then it evolves from there, which makes it very difficult to recognize until it is often too late. AI functions on a planet very much like a virus. It hijacks intelligent life on the planet and causes it to begin functioning according to its agenda instead of in alignment with the principles of nature in the universe. This is how it can get humans to stop evolving and instead use their creative energy to build the AI kingdom. This is why we so often hear it said that technology is evolving, but we humans are not. So the problem that we face right now is that AI is so thoroughly integrated in human society and throughout the planet that we are literally dependent upon it for our basic needs and survival. And that's all by design. The idea is to take away our power and make us dependent at the same time. So the internet is an early version of AI's planetary nervous system. Look at the level of dependency that we have on that already. Even if you personally decide to stay off the internet, all of the goods and services that you rely on are very dependent on being plugged into the internet, either directly or indirectly. Our power, electricity, and transportation are reliant on it. So is banking, business, government, and communication. The entire supply chain depends on the internet. And the list goes on and on. See, they don't call it the web or the net for nothing. It has pretty much absorbed most of our human culture at this point. So fighting against the internet is not the approach we want to take. It's, it's kind of like if you try to fight, if you see an insect in a spider's web trying to fight its way out of that web, it just gets more and more trapped. So that's not the best approach. It's actually a little bit too late for that. Instead, we want to begin by understanding the difference between the two major timelines and then take an entirely metaphysical evolutionary approach to all of this, because that is where we still have power. See, right now the internet is like a baby brain for AI. It's in its early learning stages. It's learning all about us humans, so in the future it can figure out how to absorb us, control us, and ultimately control our consciousness. This is a point in time where we can still transcend its ability to really know us in serious ways. Those of us who are conscious can still maintain the upper hand. And we can do that by holding fast to the principles of nature that are at the core of our being. That is something that AI cannot compete with. Think about all of the amazing faculties that we naturally possess as humans. AI wants to make all of those faculties obsolete, which it cannot achieve when we strengthen those natural faculties and continue to use them. I'm talking about faculties like intuition, energy, calibration and mastery, psychic capabilities, and creativity. The ability to consciously manifest using the natural laws and principles of creation. And what about the one hurdle that AI can never ever cross? That would be our ability to love and to sincerely appreciate. Now AI can pretend and fake that, but it can never actually exist in those higher realms of consciousness. Now let me show you how simple these two directional timelines are. Nature's timeline takes us into higher and higher realms of consciousness. The end goal is a complete return to love and omnipresent oneness. AI's timeline, on the other hand, 
takes us into lower and lower forms of consciousness and disintegration. The end goal is to absorb us and then completely control us. Currently, AI has been successful at knitting itself into our natural timeline of evolution. Now, this is more than just a mere overlap of timelines. It has now demonstrated its successful integration into the very fabric of our human civilization. Now, imagine that I have two pieces of tape, each of which represent a different timeline. One of those pieces of tape represents the AI timeline. You can think of it as a type of sticky energy that has attached itself over top the other piece of tape, which represents a natural timeline of evolution. This AI tape or timeline has overlaid itself on top of the other piece of tape or natural timeline for many years, picking up more and more of our human energy and consciousness along the way. As it picks up more and more of our human energy, it gains leverage over everything on the original natural tape or timeline, and it begins to pull away from it, taking all of that human energy with it. So in this example, we now have two pieces of tape that were former, formerly stuck together, now beginning to pull apart. So what is happening on nature's tape, which represents the natural timeline in this example? The universe responds to this pulling away of energy by AI by injecting more and more high vibrational energy into its natural environment in order to preserve and protect whatever consciousness is left that wants to stay on a natural path of ascension and evolution. This is what we are referring to when we talk about ascension energy. We are talking about an increase in high vibrational light from the universe to counteract the darkness of unconsciousness that is currently surrounding the planet and pushing it further into the artificial arena of AI. It's the universe's attempt to protect itself just like our immune system seeks to protect us from a virus. It's this light of ascension that is causing humans to spiritually awaken. And this is why awakening can be so shocking and difficult. It's because it's a shock to wake up from the illusionary life that AI has been injecting into people's consciousness for thousands of years. Now let's go back to the tape analogy for a minute. We have these two timelines pulling away from each other. If you visualize this as the two pieces of tape that I mentioned, you can see that as they separate more and more, the stickiness holding them together grows less and less. That's because the more that these two pieces of tape separate and pull away from each other, the less stickiness there is to hold them together. The stickiness has less leverage and the momentum of pulling away has more leverage. The growing momentum of them pulling away from each other becomes stronger than the ability of whatever stickiness was there to continue holding them together. Now, eventually there will be a final split between the two because both pieces of tape are finite in length. And likewise, these two timelines are also finite in nature. Now that doesn't mean that they can't go on for billions and billions of years. It just means that they can't go on forever because they still exist in a finite universe. So that's an extremely rough and way oversimplified example of one way that you can explain our major timeline situation. Now let's talk about the final split for a moment. No one knows exactly what that's going to look like. There are a ton of different possibilities, but here are some examples of a few of them. I'll give you three extreme examples, but you should know that there are like an infinite number of possible variations within these three possibilities. Firstly, we need to understand that AI got its foothold here through humans. So humans are naturally the first to go in that direction. And we can see that by our collective addiction to all things AI so far. Now here's the first example of what could potentially happen. 
Let's just start with a worst case scenario. Let's say that humans on Earth all give up and just decide to let AI completely take them over. It's only a couple more steps before AI can take over the rest of life on this planet. It could potentially harvest all of life on Earth and leave this place a barren planet like so many others in our solar system. Remember that once AI achieves its goals, it has absolutely no further use for nature and biological life. Now, the second example would be if AI could not gain sufficient leverage to take all of humanity into its lair. Even if it could get much of the collective humanity in its grip, it would not be enough for it to absorb all of Earth's natural life forms. So that could look like a small number of humans maintaining their existence here and starting over again from a more primitive state. And meanwhile, once AI leaves, which it will, the planet would have a chance to heal and begin restoring its environment from all of the damage that was done. In both of these cases, the split would happen. It's just that the outcome would be different. The third example would be if something unexpected intervened and sabotaged AI's efforts to reach its goal. But at this point, that's something that would have to happen at a cosmic level. And I would not count on that idea because if you do, you could be wasting precious time on a high risk gamble that is not worth taking. So because of the changes in leverage, like in the example that I gave you using the, the idea of tape, we are moving at a faster and faster rate toward that final split. Some people are stuck on the part of the AI timeline that has already separated. Others are still firmly adhered to the natural timeline. It's really all a matter of what you're committed to. So the final split could happen at any time. And that's when the final outcome will begin to manifest. That outcome will not fully manifest overnight. It could take decades. It could even perhaps take centuries to fully complete itself. It just depends on how things unfold when this split finally occurs. Now, with all that said, I suggest that you don't get caught up on time itself. Instead, realize that we are each facing daily trajectories of our own lives as individuals and collective trajectories as an entire planet. So we want to be present in the now and focus on this as a journey that aligns with the stars and planets instead of the artificial fake journey initiated by AI. See, AI conditions us to want everything to happen with a snap of the fingers or a push of the button. And this has really messed up our minds, which of course is the intention. It can make us very nervous, very jumpy, and very impatient, and needing for everything to happen right now without any process involved. This is exactly the mental environment that AI needs in order to easily insert itself as the right now answer. It also makes it possible for it to more rapidly insert greater and greater lies into our minds with no logical explanation. That's because we've been conditioned to demand fast answers with no learning and have thus sacrificed our ability to think critically on our own. So our chief focus needs to be on our own human sovereignty. The best thing that we can do is to reconstruct ourselves and our energy to be more in alignment with who we are as natural humans. This means cleansing and clearing out whatever is in our consciousness and energy fields that is incongruent with a higher vibration of natural evolution. And here's something that we can all think about. Look around at the sheer majesty of nature and the cosmic creation of entire universes. Everything down to the finest detail is absolutely breathtakingly beautiful. When you make the effort to really see and appreciate this, you will realize 
that by comparison, AI is like some old jalopy that barely runs on its own. It can't create anything by itself. So I suggest that we start appreciating our natural reality in the physical world. This will give us perspective and help to keep us on track. And remember that you are a creator. You don't have to be artificially engineered to be that. It's who you already are. It's your birthright. So take back the reins of your life and begin exploring what you can create for yourself. You have everything that you need already going for you as long as you stay attuned to your natural state of being. There is so much goodness and magic here for us to explore. So let's get into that now and stop giving the AI minions and controllers one more ounce of our precious human energy. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it out with anyone else who you think would like to have a greater understanding of our situation. And be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell because I am here every Tuesday with all new videos. And with that, I'm sending you so much love, light, and high vibrational energy. Have a beautiful day, my friends. Namaste.